Hey guys, it's Jenny. Alrighty, time to make an update on our little weird experiment here. We're gonna update the alternative medium we've been trying, the sponge and the microfiber. So it's been about three to four weeks ever since we started it and I already have some conclusions. As you can see, I have more orchids in microfiber than in sponges. So let's start with this one. We've potted a mini Phalaenopsis orchid in a medium consisting of sponges, normal kitchen sponges and some leca. And the result, well, it's not quite good. I mean, it kind of works. It's not gonna kill the orchid. It's not gonna suffocate it or anything bad. It's just not ideal, let's put it like that. And the reason is layering. Sponge can retain a lot of water, but it cannot really keep it evenly distributed within its mass. So due to gravity within the sponge's length, water tends to stay at the bottom. So you can see that I have wetter sponges at the bottom than I do at the top. So if you're not the type of person who waters from above and then hopes that the medium will start to absorb water, then maybe this will work better for you than me. But you know my method of watering. I want stuff to be able to absorb from the bottom or from wherever it is in the pot, just so it makes my life easier with watering. It doesn't really happen with sponge. And you can make a test if you want to see what I'm talking about. Just get a normal kitchen sponge, saturate it in water, and then just hold it from the top and you will see the water level just accumulating at the bottom while the top will not be soaked in water anymore. So for this reason, I really don't find it ideal, but I guess it's not bad. Sponges have been used in orchid growing for a lot of years right now, but in commercial nurseries, because it does retain a lot of water, but they also combine it with bark. They also don't have a lot of sponge, not the quantity I placed here. So it can help, I guess, with water retention, but it really isn't ideal. For this reason, this little orchid will get unplugged from here pretty soon and maybe potted into something else. So the sponges look pretty, they're kind of inefficient. There are no, but I'm glad I tried them. Now the microfiber experiment and this worked a lot better. So I have this orchid again for about three to four weeks into this setup. If you don't actually remember the setup, what I have here are threads of microfiber, normal material you can find on the market. It came from a mop. And here I have some polystyrene. And the result is, well, it's quite encouraging, I have to say. I do have a little problem with this as well, but now with all orchids, you'll see what I mean. So this is the first orchid we've potted in this weird medium. This is a Noncidium twinkle. And it did pretty okay so far. As you can see, the medium is moist right now because I do water it. It tends to stay moist like this for about a week which is enough and it's pretty good in my environment. The roots were not the best to begin with, but I do have a few roots. We don't see any growth right now. It's only been four weeks, but I suspect it's not gonna be toxic or anything for the roots. Inside the pot, it is quite airy. So things of the sorts, I cannot really say at the moment, but I would like to address a few things that you guys have warned me about. So first of all, the smell, does this stink? Many of you told me that kitchen rugs usually tend to stink after a while and that's what's gonna happen with this pot. Surprise, surprise, it's not stinking. <laughs> but let me tell you why it doesn't stink. It actually, hmm, it doesn't even smell like orchid. It doesn't smell. It smells like nothing, really. Okay, so the problem with kitchen rugs, you use them, right? You wipe the table or something else, you put organics in it. Also, maybe you are drying your hands. You leave dead skin debris, again, organics. In time, organics decompose. And with the composition comes the CO2 and other beautiful aromas. So pretty much that's what happens with kitchen rugs. They start to smell because you use them with organics. So they have organic particles in them. Now you might ask, well, the roots are organic as well. Yes, but they don't usually stink. If you're careful enough to remove all of the dead roots, an orchid pot should not stink, no matter the medium you're using. Using. So more than just the smell of, I don't know, greenery, this pot doesn't have it. Also, you guys were mentioning clothing. You know that if you leave clothing in the washing machine without getting it out, it will start to stink in 24 hours. Well, what happens there is the accumulation of a certain fungus. And that's what actually stinks. We're not talking about organics. But the conditions in the washing machine are not ventilated. So as we know, with orchids, fungi will not have a happy life if they live in a very, very ventilated environment. So pretty much my pot is ventilated. It is not a confined closed space. So yet again, it has no reason to stink. So everything that I have in microfiber smells like nothingness, doesn't stink. I don't have food organics or dead skin organics inside it. So it's not gonna have a bad smell. 
Other than that, it retains water, it distributes it evenly, it does exactly what I want it to do. So, so far, so good. And I do have, oopsie, I do have a few more orchids potted in microfiber. These are some orchids that I really didn't have anything to lose by placing them in this medium just to test out. Here I have some Dendrobium nobili keikis. The mother plant just snapped off. It was the one that I had outside. It fell, it was bended. Well, the canes were snapped off actually. So I just saved some keikis, planted them here and they are actually growing. They don't seem to mind the microfiber. I don't really see roots inside the pot. It hasn't been enough time. So these guys are doing okay. Then I have here a front bulb of an orchid I'm trying to save from Fusarium. And if you don't remember, this is the Calia that we called, or I called, lemon pie. I love this Catlia, but it grows slow. She is kind of finicky. I really love her, but I hate her at the same time. And P.S. I purchased her again. This is an old Catlia. I always loved it. And I was looking for a replacement. Didn't know if I will ever find it. Lo and behold, I found it at Catacetum 2. And it is pretty vigorous. It does seem to have a nice root system. Of course, I purchased it. So we do have a replacement for this one. We can play and experiment with it. So this one has some roots. We have a root here that has grown inside the microfiber. So it seems pretty jolly. It does have another root at the surface, but it was uh, attacked by the dry medium. But you know, it's a thing to experiment even with Catlias. The only thing that I don't like in this medium setup, whatever I did here, you cannot stabilize anything for the life of me. Unless you have a rhizome clip or you put a layer of wire in between two holes, you cannot stabilize orchids in this medium. It's just very, very, very light and airy. So it's not gonna happen. But there we go, we're still experimenting. You can see she didn't even start new growth just yet. I hate this orchid and I love it at the same time. And here we have the problem with the microfiber. Mind you, this is the only pot in which I see this. Do we see this browning and these stains at the top? I'm not sure if this is brown algae or brown mold or something of the source because it's taking over, you can see here, the polystyrene as well. And the polystyrene did not stay very, very wet. I can see how this can promote some stuff that like moisture, but the polystyrene was not wet. It was a little wet when I watered, but other than that, I don't know. Oh, and P.S. This is a Catlia. It's the red Catlia, Catliantha rojo. She's in a very bad way. She was just so stressed that I decided, hey, let's just experiment with this one as well. She needs hydration. So this is the only pot in which I have this formation. And it doesn't look pretty. It doesn't smell. Let's see. No, it actually doesn't smell like anything. It might not actually be fungus. It might be some sort of algae. So if it is algae, it kind of would make sense because if you don't place the seeds of algae, theoretically, it should not start to invade like this. So maybe this orchid had some spores on it or something. I don't know. So as you can see, I do have some issues in this pot. So microfiber being that it retains so much water, it is prone to creating some issues. If your area or growing space is not ventilated enough, definitely it will mold. If you're keeping the pot in a lot of light and the orchid has some algae on her roots, definitely it will take over the microfiber as well. You know, all of those issues. If the microfiber doesn't really dry all that fast, again, it's gonna promote mold and algae. So there are issues with microfiber, don't get me wrong. I just wanted to see how fast they happened. And if I can arrange the ratio so that I keep them under control. So far, none of the pots have algae or this really weird molding or whatever this is, except this pot, which is weird because all of them were placed at the same time, except the twinkle, which was placed a few days before all of these orchids. So they all had pretty much the same time in which they set in the pot. And I kind of watered pretty much the same. I didn't fertilize just yet. So I'm not entirely sure what this is, but behold, this is a problem. This only means that I cannot draw a conclusion just yet. If microfiber is viable or not, if it's gonna start to create this type of thing, then obviously it's not viable. But so far, I'm not sure. Oh, and the Vandas. With the Vandas, the story is quite, quite different. The microfiber dries completely within 24 hours, so I need to water my Vandas every two days now that it's summer. And of course, it doesn't really have time to accumulate algae or moles or anything of the sorts, and it pretty much remains intact. 
It does give a lot of water to my Vandas and I'm really happy with it. It soaks up really, really well. It doesn't drip as much as Synthic, so I do prefer it more than Synthic for the Vandas. And as you can see, nothing toxic about it. The Vandas really do okay with it. And so far in three to four weeks, yeah, I don't see any accumulations of anything. So at least with Vandas, I'm pretty sure it works and it's gonna do the job. So at least with Vandas, I do like it more than Synthic and I do intend to still use it. But with the other orchids, we're still testing. So alrighty guys, thank you for watching, hope you've enjoyed this, I'll keep you up to date. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, if you hated it, give it a thumbs down, subscribe to my channel for regular orchids and other plants videos, and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time, bye! We have a lot of empty spaces on the IKEA stand, and this is because I'm expecting some new girls, and I want them to have the best part in the house. So yes, spoilers, I made a little bit of a hole, which is exciting, and even more spoilers, I might be doing another hole, which is a lot more interesting, but this particular one is not dependent on me. So I'm not gonna tell you what it is, if it's gonna happen or not, but please, keep your fingers crossed that I will be a lucky puppy around next week.